on to Florence. And what we're gonna do now is take a little orientation walk. We're gonna go out to the street market. That's gonna be very tempting to you. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be basically free for lunch. Now, what I'd like to do is for us to walk through it but stay together. You're gonna have plenty of time on your own to shop on it. I just wanna give you your overall bearings, okay? So if you really want to get a nice leather jacket or a nice leather wallet, you'd be better off uh, going in the stores. But by all means, take a look now, you know, when you've got your time for shopping and see what they've got. It's really quite cool. It's about 60 degrees, very pleasant for walking. Bright overcast day, just perfect. A short walk through these interesting streets of Florence brings us to the beautiful and harmonious Church of San Lorenzo designed by Brunelleschi. There's no elaborate decoration in the interior and one of the reasons is this is the style of Florence. Florence was different than Rome. There were different city-states, different countries even as it were, and especially because this is the early Renaissance. Again, we're talking the middle of the 15th century, early 15th century. Let me take a short stroll with our local guide, Anne Barbetti. And one of okay. the first sites she brings us to is the ancient baptistery with its famous golden doors. Lorenzo Ghiberti, and they tell 10 stories of the Old Testament. And so they're called the gates of paradise. You also have the hierarchy of the angels. You'll find that art is all around you in Florence. The modern artisans recreating the old statues. There's Giotto's very early Renaissance paintings on the walls of Santa Croce. And then we go to one of the fine small art museums, the Pitti Palace. It was the home of the Medici. And we'll walk through the Pitti Palace, which is a beautiful art museum that I'll talk about while we're over there. Uh, that, that visit will only take about one hour. And then we'll walk together across the Ponte Vecchio and back into the heart of the old town for a free time for shopping. Shopping, shopping, shopping. Yay! Yay. Yay. So you can buy your jewelry and your leather goods and shoes. Shoes are very good in Florence. Belts, wallets, etc. And then uh, we'll regroup here at 5.30 today. 5.30 in the lobby and we'll go see the statue of David. And you really don't want to miss that because it's a beautiful and easy thing to see. And we'll take taxis to the Palazzo Pitti instead of walking. It's just over a mile to walk it. So we'll just ride over in taxis. The Pitti Palace is one of those real treasure boxes that you shouldn't miss when you're in Florence. But unfortunately, uh, most groups, most individuals who go to Florence don't go over across the river to see it which is a real shame because it is spectacular. Look at these ceilings, the walls, the floors, the furnishings. It's all beautiful wrappings for the artworks that are hanging on the walls. We've got some of the most important paintings. There's marble tables that are inlaid. There's about eight main rooms in the Pitti Palace filled with these masterworks. And then there's about eight more rooms that were the palace of the royals that's open for you to walk through so that you can see how they live. Raphael is one of the greatest of the painters who's represented here at the Pitti Palace and many others. So stop on by and have a look for yourself. It only takes about one hour to go through it. And then nearby you'll find the Ponte Vecchio. That's the Bridge of Gold and that will lead you back across to the main part of town. And then all through this neighborhood, you see there's little side streets that are kind of cute. These little alleyways, little churches and the little courtyards. And that makes for a nice walking too, just kind of wandering around. There's not so many stores in those little side alleyways. It's a pretty regular grid work here. The streets are pretty straight with right angle intersections. Just want to, don't want to get run down by a car is all. So here we've got the uh, Piccadilly Pizzeria. And they have got a fabulous bunch of different kinds of pizza toppings in there. It's really tasty. Uh, it's out in the window and then they'll heat it up. They put it in the oven and make it nice and hot and fresh for you. And it's yeah, real good food and, and not expensive. You can get a soda and then you take your pizza out in the back. There's a little garden with uh, benches, little picnic benches. 
And this kind of weather is perfect for sitting outside and enjoy a little pizza snack. So this is the straw market. Like I was saying, they don't sell straw here anymore. It used to be a straw market. Now it's all for tourist souvenirs and leather wallets. And now if you're gonna buy a couple of wallets, you could bargain a little bit maybe. You might get them down 5% or something. Uh, silk scarves, little statues. When you're out shopping in town at midday and you start getting hungry, one of the convenient places to head for is a self-service cafeteria. There's half a dozen of these places scattered through the center of town. The hot pot is one that we've enjoyed in the past, right near the church of Orson Michel. The streets of Florence are just marvelous for walking because they're narrow, they're friendly to the pedestrian, there's hardly any scooters or cars allowed here in the center, and they're lined with shops of all kinds. This particular store specializes in high quality, art reproductions of the famous statues of Florence and ancient Rome. One of the greatest names in the art history of Florence is Brunelleschi, and this is one of his first buildings. It's the Hospital of the Innocents, and it was designed in the 1430s. Nearby you'll find the Archaeological Museum of Florence that has several important bronzes from the Etruscan era. Here's the Chimera from the 4th century BC and the Orator from the 1st century BC. Discovered by Renaissance archaeologists, they amazed the public with their beauty. The most amazing statue in Florence and probably in the world is Michelangelo's David, finished in 1504. It established Michelangelo as the greatest artist of his time. It's found in the Academia Museum, which also has a cast of John Bologna's great statue. And then after going through these artworks, you build up another appetite. So it's time for dinner this time at Le Fonticini, a classic establishment right on Via Nazionale in the heart of Florence. Fabulous restaurant. They've got fresh made pasta. In fact, our waiter was also the pasta maker and save room for some of that dessert. So you can see that Florence is a delight for all the senses. Okay, follow me down the ramp. Watch the dip. So there's some benches here. We can sit down and relax. Yes, it's time to go, reluctantly leaving Florence, but now we're heading on to Venice. The trip just keeps getting better and better.